How's it going, guys? Medium difficulty question cardio for the step one. Before we start, please subscribe and channel. I really appreciate it. Give me a like, really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram threads, moment underscore medical, and HL man underscore medical links down below for me. Telegram links to the Telegram group channel down below. Now start the clip. 40 year old man, two episodes of chest tightness for the past three months. Angiogram was performed showing coronary blood flow found in infusion norepinephrine. Question wants to know which of the following mediators primarily accounts for the increased coronary blood flow observed one or two minutes following the any infusion. We have a seemingly weird slash recondite graph here. Uh, if you think this is weird or nitpicky, don't take it up with me. Take it up with the immune exam. Nearly identical question shows up on the offline form. So let's just hop to the answers here. Should I say adenosine? Correct answer. Now you need to know that adenosine is the main autoregulator of coronary blood flow. It's a potent vasodilator. Okay, so norepinephrine is given initially. You see a, a transient decrease in coronary blood flow. You say, why the fuck does that happen? It's because norepinephrine is going to increase heart rate due to its beta-1 agonistic effects. And as heart rate increases, we have a fractionally lesser percentage of the cardiac cycle spent in diastole. However, the coronary arteries fill during diastole. You have closure of the aortic valve during diastole, and you have the aortic sinuses, orifices at the base of the aortic arch, where blood will enter the coronary arteries. So you say, well, it's a little bit weird slash counterintuitive that if we have, let's say, exercise where there's an increase in heart rate, where we would have increased oxygen demand, but if that simultaneously means that less of the cardiac cycle is spent in diastole and we have less coronary filling, how do we reconcile that increased oxygen demand with less filling? It's because we have adenosine that's going to be produced uh, during the breakdown of ATP that will cause a potent vaso dilatory effect of the coronary arteries. Okay, so it's the major autoregulator, coronary blood flow. They, they want you to know that for you simile. They also want you to know adenosine is the mediator responsible for cardiac pain during angina or an MI. And they want you to know, this is more 2CK, that adenosine is the second treatment for SVT, supraventricular tachycardia, in patients who are stable slash do not have coma uh, when you've already tried vagal maneuvers, okay, which refers to karate massage or ice pack to the face in kids. Those are the three things essentially you should know about adenosine for USMLE. So let's just quickly hop to the other answers here. Choice B, angiotensin 2, wrong fucking answer. Angiotensin 2 is a potent vasoconstrictor, would have the opposite effect. So angiotensin 2 is going to be increased in heart failure because the heart's not pumping well as well as it should be. You're going to have decreased renal perfusion, RAS is upregulated. And AT2 will bind to receptors on peripheral arterioles, increasing vasoconstriction, causing afterload increase. So this is also why ACE inhibitors are ARBs. US really loves lisinopril, our first line for improving ejection fraction, heart failure. Okay, if you decrease afterload, the heart can pump easier, it's less resistance. Angiotensin 2, of course, also a constrictor of the efferent arterioles leaving the kidney, thereby increasing filtration fraction. That is maintaining GFR in the setting of decreased renal plasma slash blood flow. Wrong fucking answer. Show is the epinephrine wrong fucking answer. So this can be a bit confusing. You should know just tangentially that norepinephrine agonizes alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1. Epinephrine agonizes alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1, beta 2. So the difference between norepinephrine and epinephrine is that epinephrine can agonize beta 2, whereas norepinephrine cannot. Now, what I'm going to tell you is going to sound a little bit weird slash confusing if you're weak on farm. I'm not going to harp on this slash spend all day, but I just want you to know that epinephrine, because it has beta-2 effects in addition to alpha-1, beta-2 is vasodilatory in the periphery, whereas alpha-1 is constrictive. So what they like doing is giving you a graph with the drug X and Y that are given. And... They're going to tell you drug X is epinephrine. They're going to say it increases blood pressure. And that's because epinephrine at high doses will bind strongly to alpha-1, okay, with constrictive effects. Then they're going to tell you drug Y is given. And then epinephrine is given again, and you see a decrease in blood pressure. And they want you to know drug Y is phentolamine, which is an alpha-1 blocker. The long story short is if you antagonize alpha-1, epinephrine, can, which is vasoconstrictive, you can only agonize beta-2 now, which is vasodilatory, and that's going to cause a drop in your blood pressure. As I said, it can sound confusing if your farm is weak, but it's a high-yield point I want you to know for USMLE. Wrong fucking answer. Joe is D. 
histamine wrong fucking answer. So it's a vasodilator, but it's not the main autoregulator adenosine is. So the, uh, you also want to know histamine, prostaglandin, they're known as autocoids, which are mediators that have local, if they're released uh, at a site of uh, trauma or injury, for instance, and then they have a local effect. Those are called autocoids. It shows up, that term shows up on one of the offline NBME exams. So histamine prostaglandin are responsible for ruber, erythema, okay? They're not, necess they're not uh, responsible for actual induration slash swelling, which instead is going to be TNF-alpha, which causes uh, increased vascular permeability, increased spacing between endothelial cells. But as I just said, histamine and prostaglandin are just increasing blood flow. Uh, erythema slash ruber. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, nature to peptide, wrong fucking answer. So as the name implies, it induces natriuresis, which means increased micturation slash urination of sodium. So ANP is released by, you guessed it, atrial myocytes in response to increased stretch. So it, it functions as a, a natural diuretic. So by decreasing renal retention of sodium, it can help reduce fluid status. It also suppresses renin release. Wrong fucking answer. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.